Posey Gloves here, and I have a question. What's the difference between pitch and frequency? I mean, it's a little bit like asking what's the difference between color in a room when you're not there and color in a room when you are there. Is there color in a room when you're not there? Does it take a person to recognize that something is a color for the color to exist? This is actually a philosophical debate, has a lot of theories behind it, but we could ask a similar question about sound. If a sound is played in a room and you're not there to hear it, does it have a pitch? Sort of like that kind of a question. Does it have a pitch? Does it have a frequency? That's what we're going to take a look at. We know that frequency is repetition. It can be measured and quantified. Things that vibrate have a frequency. So a guitar string, a snare drum head, someone singing, these things move back and forth. They oscillate, they go through what's called a cycle. And the number of cycles it goes through per second is referred to as the frequency. We measure this value in Hertz, named after Heinrich Rudolf Hertz for his conclusive proof of electromagnetic waves. So now we know that if something has a value of 100 Hertz, it oscillates 100 times per second. But we have to dig a little bit deeper. This isn't enough. We also have to take a look at cycles. So for example, let's say that we have an object and it is oscillating between point A and point B. Must it reach point A and point B before it is considered a cycle? This is also referred to as the amplitude, the distance it can move. And so if something had an amplitude of five, that means it could go a positive five units in a negative five units. And moving between these units would constitute a cycle. But what if it only reached four and a half units or negative four and a half units? Well, a cycle is defined as periodic repetitive fluctuations from a constant average observed over an extended period. Okay, so now we understand that things that oscillate back and forth, they don't have to max out, we can work on an average. So as long as it completes the cycle, we're, we're good to go. So if it goes back and forth and back again, it comes back to its resting state and then continues on its way, we know that we've completed one cycle and then we move on to two cycles, even though it doesn't necessarily max out the amplitude. Okay, that's fine for waveforms that repeat regularly, such as sine waves, triangle waves, square waves, but what about complex waveforms? And what about noise? such as white noise or pink noise. Well, up until now, we've been looking at a single frequency. Complex waveforms are simply more single frequencies on top of each other, combining in various ways to make up the audible spectrum. Noise, on the other hand, is another story. I'm going to assume we're talking about white noise here for simplicity's sake. White noise is noise where all frequencies are represented in the spectrum and they are all given equal energy. So each frequency receives the same amount as energy and they are randomly played. So in this case, which one do we use to determine its frequency? In fact, which one do we use to determine the frequency in the complex tone since it's made up of a whole bunch of frequencies? Well, these kinds of questions are all wrong. The frequency is already determined. Simply pick a frequency in the wave and find out. Instead, we are really asking what is the pitch of the note? We use the term fundamental to determine the pitch of a tone. The fundamental is simply the lowest tone. The frequencies above this tone are called harmonics when they are multiples of the fundamental frequency and overtones when they are not. So let's say we have a frequency of 100 hertz and this is our fundamental tone. The next harmonic would be 200 and the following one would be 300, 400, 500, so on and so forth while an overtone would be an unrelated value to the fundamental. So it could be 101, 153, 2,796, some value that is not a multiple of the fundamental. But we still have a problem. Noise has no fundamental. It's equal across the spectrum. There's no one frequency that's louder than any other. So how would we determine the pitch of noise? Well, this is why it doesn't have a pitch. This is why some sounds simply lack a pitch. We have no way to determine what is the fundamental. We have no way to pull and extract a harmonic series from it. And so to us, it just sounds like noise. It's the reason why some drum sounds sound the way they do. Let's say that a metal pipe gets hit in a room. If we left it up to the universe to determine what's in that room, the universe would say the frequencies emanating from this pipe that just got hit are just a bunch of frequencies. They wouldn't categorize it as a tone or a pitch. It takes a person, a human being, some sort of an intelligence to go into that room and to hear it. And the reason why we would do this is because it's useful information. We'd say, oh, something just hit that pipe. I should probably go check out what it is. Or maybe I should run for my life because whatever hit that pipe might be coming for me. And so it is us that puts it there. So frequencies exist regardless of us, but pitch, pitch will appear or disappear precisely because of us.
But that's not the end of it. We don't hear all frequencies equally either. In fact, we hear non-linearly. Fletcher and Munson famously proved this in playing tones being generated at the precise same volume to participants and asking them if tone A was louder than tone B. The results are known as the Fletcher-Munson curve. I cover this in more detail in my critical listening series, link in the description. What they showed is that our perception of frequency becomes more linear as frequencies get louder. To really understand this, we need to understand the logarithmic nature of pitch. Any audio professional will tell you, it's just standard knowledge that everyone seems to have, that our hearing on the frequency spectrum ranges from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. This is an enormous range, and I've never really met anyone that actually has a range that large. It varies somewhere in the middle, and you wouldn't want to hear the extreme tones anyways. If we take a waveform of 100 hertz and double it, it will sound quite nice. This interval of two to one is known as an octave. With every doubling, we will increase one octave, but there is a problem, and its name is equal temperament. Equal temperament is the device used in Western music to tune instruments. Basically, each octave contains 12 notes, and this is the problem. Nothing can be quite in tune in a system like this. Consider the frequency 10,000 Hz. Now consider its octave. We would have to double it, so that would make it 20,000 Hz. This means that we have 10,000 Hz in between, and in those 10,000 Hz, we only need to represent 12 notes. So that's plenty of Hz, we should have no problem doing so. But now consider this. If we go down to 20 hertz, the lowest end of the hearing range, and then we double that, we'd get 40 hertz. Well, that means that we only have 20 hertz to express the same 12 notes. Naturally, we have an issue. This is because bass frequencies literally have less frequencies. They only have 20 while the other one has 10,000 to express their tuning. If pitch is primarily concerned with the fundamental tone, then why don't bass instruments always sound out of tune in relation to higher instruments? The answer is harmonics, more specifically, harmonic series. Our brain is so good at finding patterns in music that it can actually conclude the correct frequency, even if the existing frequency is incorrect. We can even conclude the pitch of a note when the fundamental is completely removed. Now I know some of you sound guys out there are probably going, hold up just a sec, if you get rid of the fundamental, the next frequency is usually the octave. So it would sound like the same note, but you can actually remove this as well and you would still be able to detect the correct pitch. This is because you're using the harmonics relative amplitude to determine the original or imposed pitch. Amplitude gets even fuzzier. If you take a 100 hertz frequency and play it soft, though the frequency is precisely 100 hertz, the tone appears to go very slightly flat or down. If you play the same frequency louder, it will appear to go very slightly sharp or up. If we add two frequencies, it gets even more interesting. Let's say we have the frequencies 167 hertz and 318 hertz. Played softly, they appear to fight each other. Played loudly, they appear to be slightly better simply because the lower frequency will actually go a little flat and the upper frequency will go a little sharp in relationship to each other, giving us a closer relationship of 150 hertz to 300 hertz or two to one. This is because our brains will actually process the information differently. And because we've played it louder, our ear is more capable of determining the frequencies and will actually move them towards a more desirable goal. Granted, the difference is pretty small. So the next time someone tells you you're playing out of tune, you can literally say, that's just because they say so. And you can also tell them to have a blessed day.